I love getting preached to. Wow. I believe I'm up. I think so. I, I can't even believe that Michaela knew how long I was out living in sin. That was like 10 years. That was, that was real whole, Holy Spirit coming down right there. Oh, wow. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm, I'm so ashamed of the things that I've done. But I'm not ashamed of the gospel. That's the power of God unto salvation for all. You understand that? All who believe. The Lord has appeared unto me, saying, I have loved thee with an everlasting love. Therefore, with loving kindness have I drawn thee. That's all good. But my brothers are always there. I swear, if we're in battle right now, they'd be holding my arms up. Beloved, thank you. Worthiness. Understanding your worth when you're unworthy. Matthew 3.11 tells us, John the Baptist, I indeed baptize you with water unto repentance, but he that cometh after me is mightier than I, whose shoes I am not worthy to bear. I am not worthy to bear, John the Baptist said. He shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. John the Baptist, we know him to be a righteous man. Jesus said, the greatest of all the prophets, and he said, I am not worthy. John the Baptist knew his position. The centurion, Matthew 8, 5 to 8. When Jesus came to Capernaum, there came a centurion saying to him, Lord, my servant lieth at home sick of the palsy, grievously tormented. Jesus said unto him, I will come and heal him. But the centurion answered and said, Lord, I am not worthy that thou should come under my roof. Just speak the word. Speak the word on another that he will be healed. The centurion knew his position. He wasn't worthy, but he knew who was. Matthew 10, 32 to 33 and 36 to 38, Jesus saying, A man's foes shall be of his own household. He that loveth father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. Because your folks will keep you back if you want to run to Jesus. Do it this way, don't do it that way. He that loveth son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me, Jesus says. Who is your first love? He that taketh not his cross and followeth me is not worthy of me. We've got to pick up the cross. That is our position. Jesus said, whoever confesses me before men, him will I confess before my Father in heaven. But who will deny me before men, I will also deny him, her, before my Father in heaven. We are crucified with Christ. That is our position. It's not our worthiness, it's Jesus' worthiness. Is he worthy of your affection? Is he worthy of your love? It's not about the faith that you have. We have a great God. Great is His faithfulness. Faithful is He who has called you, who will also do it. He said to His servants, the wedding is ready. But they which are bidden are not worthy. He gave the message of truth, of love, of repentance to His church. But they laughed and scorned. They were not considered worthy. So what does Jesus do? Go into the highways, into the byways, and find all you can and bid them to the marriage. So those servants went out into the highways and gathered together as many as they could find, both good and bad. It's Jesus' worthiness. It's what he thinks. It's not what you think. It's what he thinks of you, not what you think of you, not what your neighbor thinks of you, not what your mom or dad or brother or sister thinks of you. It's what Jesus thinks of you. And if he thought of you so much that he would die for you, you are worth it. Worthy is the lamb who was slain. Hebrew 11, Hebrews 11 says, all these men of faith were faith. There's a lot of omissions there. 
Because I, when I think of faith walkers, it's Abel, it's Enoch, it's Noah, Joseph, Joshua, Deborah, Hannah, Samuel, Jonathan, Uriah. Yes, Uriah, true faith walker, frontline battler. Daniel, Elijah, Elisha, Isaiah, Jeremiah, Esther, Ezra, Nehemiah, the list goes on. True faith walkers. I don't consider Abraham to be a faith walker. The guy gave his wife up twice. Oh, honey, I might get killed. You better go and... Jacob lied and stole from his father who was blind. Moses was a murderer, had anger problems. Rahab, big whore, big city. David chased skirt and killed anyone he wanted. Bathsheba had an affair with the president. Manasseh, Manasseh turned the temple of God into a male whorehouse, practiced sorcery in the house of God, and by being in there, became the head of the prostitutes of all the men. Yet he repented and God said, come back to the kingdom. He even sawed his grandfather, the prophet Isaiah, in half. God still forgave. Peter was a big mouth. Who's unworthy? Those who aren't happy to go to heaven. Those who are not satisfied with seeking God's face. Which one of those was unworthy? All of them. But they all saw God face to face. They experienced true repentance and they turned their way and accepted God's amazing grace. Who's worthy of that? No one. We're all unworthy. Only Jesus makes us worthy. Blood of the Lamb, bread of life. That's why we do this, because he said so. Think of this. It's the overcomers versus the adulterers. Revelation 21, 7, 8. This paints the clear picture. You pick which side you want to be on. Jesus gives us choice. Revelation 27, sorry, 21, verses 7 and 8. This is the difference. The overcomers versus the adulterers. He that overcometh shall inherit all things. I will be his God and he shall be my son or daughter. Next verse, please. But the fearful, unbelieving, abominable, murderers, whoremongers, sorcerers, idolaters, liars shall have their part in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. In other words, if you want to be content with being a liar, you want to be a whoremonger, you want to be a sorcerer and dabble in occult, if you want to keep on doing those things, God says, fine, do those things, but not in my house anymore. No. Your choice. If you hear his voice today, don't harden your heart. Cain, Nimrod, Nadab, Abihu, Achan, Hophni, Phinehas, Saul, Ahab, Judas, Annas, Sapphira. There's your Bible study. Check out their characters, all liars, and they went to the whole end of it. How could you lie to the Holy Spirit? He knows everything. And then, of course, there's Saul of Tarsus. Saul of Tarsus, the chief persecutor, the murderer of Christians. Two minutes with Jesus is enough to transform his life. And you tell me. Saul becomes Paul. And he wrote these words. Every single love letter he writes to his church. Grace and peace to you through Jesus Christ. Every single letter. I've taken that and I've blueprinted that and I start every letter, every email the same way because I know exactly what price Grace cost. Paul understood grace. I found out that there's this thing called the knowledge. Black cabs in London have this thing called the knowledge. I thought the people of the book, I thought we knew the knowledge. They need to know the knowledge. They start in Charing Cross. They've got to study for three years minimum at Charing Cross and learn a six-mile grid and learn 20,000 street names. That's the knowledge. They don't drop the standard for anyone. The standard is high. I feel for PKs because I have little kids growing up 
and I've got to play pastor and father. It feels as if everything you do, you're being judged. You've got to raise up the standard. The standard, the standard. As I understand it, the standard is a banner. And it's stained with blood. That's the standard. The prodigal discovered that he was in the pig pen and he reached a point where he... It was for him, it was make or break. You know the story. You've read it. It's been teached and preached for years. But he said the words, I will tell him, I will tell my father that I'm not worthy. Now, he rehearsed it. He rehearsed this great speech. And he wasn't worthy. But he still went back. Who met him on the way? Father met him. Father is here now. Jesus is here now. The Holy Spirit is now. They are coming to you. If you're a sinner and you want to change, then come. If you're happy to stay in the pig pen, stay. You will not get judged. We'll come and we'll pray. I'm not here to tell you what you should do. That's the work of the Holy Spirit. But the Savior is calling. And I need you to understand that we are not worthy, but it's not about us. Only the Lamb of God is worthy. The Bible says, the Spirit and the Bride say, come, taste and see that the Lord is good.